This video is about buds and shoots, which are the building blocks of the above ground portions of a tree. In a previous video, I discussed meristems and cambiums, which are more of a cell or tissue level discussion. With buds, we're getting more into the bigger structures that you can see with the naked eye. A bud is a structure that contains the new leaves and stems for the next growing season. It also contains an apical meristem where new cells are constantly divided and added on to the body of the plant. The baby leaves fold over and protect the meristem from damage. Buds are arranged in a specific pattern around the stem, which is unique to that species. When a bud falls off the stem, it may also leave a unique looking scar that can be helped to identify that species in the winter. Each bud is covered by bud scales, which are modified leaves that protect the bud from damage. Once the bud starts growing, these scales fall off and leave a ring around the entire stem. They do look different from bud scars, and they are called bud scale scars. The bud scale scars can be used to determine how much a stem has grown in a given year. For instance, here's a stem that has grown 2 inches last year, about half an inch the previous year, half an inch the year before, and then 5 inches the year before that. You can tell that in the past 3 years, this tree has been stressed. The number of buds that are produced for next year's growth is determined by the conditions of this year during the time when the new buds are being formed. So if the conditions are good, more buds will be preformed. If conditions are poor, you'll have fewer. After stressful events, it can take a few seasons for a tree to fully recover, not just one year of good conditions. Now, let's take a look at the structure of a stem. The areas at which the leaves and the branches come off the main stem are called the nodes. You may also have additional structures in between the leaf and its node, and this area is called the leaf axle. Between the nodes are sections of stems called internodes, which simply means between nodes. It's this section of the stem that's responsible for how long a shoot gets. It's the elongation of the internode that gives length and height to a tree. Now we're moving on to different types of buds. I'm going to categorize them based on where they're located on a stem, as well as what I'm going to call their activity status. Based on the location, we have four types of buds. The apical or terminal bud is found at the tip of a stem, including the smaller iterations that come off of it. A lateral bud is found on the side of a stem, typically at a node. Eventually, the lateral bud will develop into its own stem with its own apical bud. Then you have an axillary bud, which forms in the leaf axle between the leaf and the node. So far, these three types of buds have been growing neatly from nodes, but sometimes buds will grow in locations you don't expect them to, and there's no pattern to where they show up. These are the adventitious buds. If you're a gardener who has grown tomatoes before, you may have read suggestions to bury the stem deeper in the soil so that roots will come off of the stem. These are considered adventitious. Then we have groupings of buds based on their activity level. A bud might be described as dormant, meaning it's not currently growing and is waiting for the next growing season. But not every single bud will start growing in the season after it's being formed. Sometimes their growth is blocked by hormones coming from the apical or terminal bud. In that situation, they become latent buds. Latent buds are also called epicormic buds. They grow just a little bit every single year so that they can stay right underneath the bark instead of getting embedded into the wood. They function like an emergency fund of sorts where if the upper parts of the stem is damaged, the plant hormones change and then the latent buds are no longer suppressed. These buds produce epicormic shoots and epicormic shoots are attached just under the bark. That makes them relatively weak and because there's often a lot of them, they also get crowded as each shoot gets larger. 
It's really important to thin out and manage epicormic shoots after a stem failure or after a tree has been over pruned. Tree species that have more latent buds and epicormic growth are more adapted to pruning practices like hedging, pollarding, or coppicing. They simply regrow all their shoots in the next season. By contrast, most conifers do not have latent buds, so they cannot be pruned in the same way. You have to be really careful about how much foliage you're removing because the entire branch might die if there's not enough foliage to sustain it. There are conifers that are exceptions, like coast redwoods and canary island pines, but these are fire adapted species that need to re sprout after fires to recover their canopies.